Okay. Okay. Are we there? We are there. This is the English edition okay. of the coach viewing. <laughs> so, um, yes, my name is uh, Jens Gott. I'm the photograph conservator here in the Norwegian National Museum for Photography, Reus Museum. Um, we are a little bit late because uh, there was a bad uh, 4G in the 19th <laughs> century, but now we are here. So, um, what uh, do we want to look at today? Yeah, what are we looking at, Jens? Yes, uh, so clear. today we want to look at amprotypes. Mm -hmm. And uh, for many, many people, it, it doesn't say nothing. Mm -hmm. well, what is that? Well, uh, an amprotype is a 19th century photographic process, very early one. Um, we are talking about here, about the first 20 years of photography we are still in. And, um, for example, here we have one. Uh, actually, the most, uh, this is a original amprotype. It's easy to identify because it's written here also. Can you see it? No, I can see uh, the, the reflection from the lamp. Yes, Beauty, beautiful mm. lady. Mm. Right, okay. Um, and um, yes, so the, actually what I want to say is the most amprotypes uh, are not really amprotypes because it's a special term uh, for um, images um, which uh, are made in a special way. Mm -hmm. But already in the start, um, the name was coined, uh, and so a lot of other images are also called amprotypes. And we call, we are talking about in the professional term is um, red collodion positives on glass. Um, so that's the correct word. That's the correct term, mm -hmm. and it is um, this uh, technology came in. Um, around 1851. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the inventor is uh, Frederick Scott Archer, which experimented with wet collodion, uh, which is also a term many people don't know. Maybe we go to the other side mm -hmm. to, to look at uh, Let's see. a few things we're before we go back here. Yeah, we're now yeah. in the conservation department. Yeah, the biggest Norwegian <laughs> conservation department for photographs. Yes. Um, <laughs> so we have uh, collodion is a liquid it is um, uh, dissolved gun cotton in uh, ether and alcohol. And this liquid has the property that you can also dissolve salts in it. Does it smell good? It smells like uh, in a dentist shop. <laughs> and um, yeah, it smells good, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you also mix this with, uh, um, for example, your halogen salts in it, and if you do want to do black and white photography, you have to use uh, a halogen and silver. And silver heavy and silver nitrate. So this is basically that's what you what you need. Mm -hmm. And what Scott Archer did, he put the collodion on a piece of glass. He had already the halogens in there, and then he sensitized it in a box like this. Put it in uh, in here, sensitized it with the silver nitrate, and then you had a light sensitive photographic plate. Mm -hmm. And then you put it in a camera bag, like looks like this. So we don't have so much time, so uh, mm. ha you have to come back in a workshop in Preuss Museum yes. to learn this. <laughs> so, and then he, sent, uh, he exposed this. It has to be, had to be done in a wet condition, so that the pores of the plate are still open, and the developer plate could go in. That's why it's called wet collodion. Because mm. it had to and be wet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this process was used for making negatives, and also making positives. And when we go back in the other room, okay, yeah, we go back in the other room. We go back and forth a little bit. Yes. So we you have sit on the couch. We are moving. Yeah, the couch is not here. <laughs> was too big. So, <laughs> anyway, so um, then uh, for the direct positive process, which was also earlier um, already known from a technique uh, we call the daguerre type, after the inventor. Louis Daguerre, which is here on the Daguerreotype case. Okay, so here's the guy. This uh, he is came in, our he, guy. Yeah, and this this is our guy. Actually, yeah. he he brought uh, photography for the most of the people in this time in the 1839 to the world. Mm -hmm. And here's a Daguerreotype in it, which is on a silver plate. So it's a mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. technique. 
Yeah, and it's it's quite it's uh, very re reflective. <laughs> yes, it's on a it's on a silver coated plate. I think people can see that. It's yeah, a young so boy it's here. it's hard to to look at mm. if you have the wrong angle. Uh, yeah. Like the people in 19th century, yeah, <laughs> they complained about it. This is hard to look at. Yeah, yeah, but it's really detailed and it's fantastic. Anyway, so you have these daguerreotypes, and then Scott Archer came with this other together with his friend uh, Peter Fry to this direct positive technique on mm -hmm. the wet plate, which we have here. A few on my Garfalls, an American plate. And True. Yes. And big. And here we have a little advertisement on the back on, of an type or what we all call type, but it is not really type mm -hmm. anyway, it's wet plate. <laughs> so there's this advertisement, and here they call it type. Collodiotype portraits are perfectly free from reflection and can be seen in any shade of light. And so on, Perfect. right? How we can uh, we can do this? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we go a little bit farther back in history also, because where does it come from? You see, they're all in small etuis. They are in little frames. They remind us on something. And if you have been in a in a museum before and saw uh, paintings, as you you remember, maybe also the miniature painting. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the National Museum for Photography has no miniature paintings mm -hmm. because we are a photography museum, right? Yes, yes. Anyway, but we have a miniature photo photograph which uh, reminds on really on a miniature painting. Can you mm. see it? Yeah, no, I can okay, see it. Okay, good. Beautiful. Everybody can see it? Yes. Good. So they, that's how they look like. And then mm. it goes on. And then we have, of course, silhouettes, also 19th century pre photographic things. Mm. framed like this and you have uh, even reproduction of miniature paintings mm -hmm. in a photographic way so here we have a wet wet collodion also an amber type mm -hmm. right of a miniature painting yes. obviously uh, the same thing here with an older lady mm -hmm. and uh, you have uh, oh, even for the back it's a painting or uh, reproduced with the daguerreotype process okay so, um, and also you make reproductions of the gyrotypes by the ambrotype. <laughs> That's it, yeah. So it's really cool. It's cool. Um, yes. So, uh, so, so what is the real ambrotype before the time is running out? I'll show you that. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the real ambrotype, I said there was an image on class, right? Mm -hmm. You can look at it as a positive. But you can also look at it as a negative, right? Yeah, we see it as a negative there, yeah. Yeah, uh, because the and silver is reflecting also light, not just absorbing, like in modern negatives. Yes. So, but it's developed in a special way, so we make it even more developing. And here we have a real amplitude in, in pieces. So we have mm -hmm. this Passport 2, a preserver around, and here, here you can touch almost the photographic uh, mm -hmm. material, and here not. Mm. Because there's a class sheet on top. Mm -hmm. And there was a guy called Ambrosius Cutting. Mm -hmm. And his middle name, also Ambrosius in the, in the middle was that, um, comes from, uh, uh, now I have to read it up, Amprotos, <laughs> <laughs> to pronounce yes. it right. Uh, yes. It's uh, Greek yes. and means immortal. So he had immortal as his middle name. Yeah, in a way. Mm. Uh, so it is a funny coincidence, mm. and I'm sure he was also thinking about it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it, this would be also such a catcher for the ear yeah. that the name was used later for all of them. Yeah. But because he, these are immortal he, images. Yes, mm. he made them so permanent. See, there's no uh, no fading, nothing. Mm. And uh, th there are two class sheets. There's this one class sheet, uh, class sheet mm. with the image on it. Mm. And then there's a class sheet on top. Yeah. And in between is a layer of, of course, the photographic layer and the layer of uh, a liquid or a resin called the uh, Canada balsam, mm -hmm. which is a resin from a tree mm -hmm. and it has optical properties and it's uh, used uh, in the 19th century and later on also 20th century. For example, in the optical industry, to put lenses together and such things. Okay, so that's what makes this a number type. Yeah. It's this resin. So this ceiling, mm. this mounting, uh, 
limited the excess of air, of course, mm. and so uh, preserves the inside for oxidation and mm. so on, deterioration. Mm. Mm. So this makes these things really permanent. If you look at, yeah? Yeah, we have one question about if we know anything about who are in these old pictures, the persons, who are they? Yeah, so th this is a mix. We have a catalog and we have some of them. We have the information, mm. with others the disinformation got lost. Yeah, so just um, the images. With Norwegian images, or for example, if you have the European style, which we got often some gifts from family, so we know. Mm. For example, this is a European style one. Mm. Uh, or French uh, mounting, you can also see, which mm -hmm. also existed for the girl type. Here we have often information. For the American ones, we have not so much information because they are bought in auctions and so on. Mm. And here's a typical European one. Here we have information. Okay. Sometimes it uh, goes back because we got uh, images from families as a gift or uh, the founder of the collection, Life Boys, he bought it. Uh, from from people or anyway so we have more information here mm. uh, but unfortunately many many times this information gets lost yeah mm. um, here's one we have all the party information so this this officer here right and this the special thing with this one is that we, that we also have this is a copy of, an, of an, uh, another photograph, which is besides yeah. uh, the girl type. Yeah. Because the only way to make copies for many photographs in that time was to, make a, to, uh, to take a photograph of the photograph. Yeah. Of course, there was also early negative processes too, but anyway. Right. Yeah? Okay, and there's one more question here. Uh, there's one uh, original amber type that was open. But are they supposed to be sealed inside the frame so they don't uh, corrode? Yes, yes. I have read that they will be damaged when they are this exposed to air. This so is a question. real big problem. Mm. So the original amprotype or the coated uh, plates, they, they are quite tough. So they can survive a lot uh, without uh, sealing. But often here is a Norwegian, no, this is a Danish one, which is not properly sealed. And you see it, there's a lot of corrosion. Right? Yeah. So there's some air coming in, for example, here, because it's an opening here. Mm. And that needs uh, um, at least a, a new ceiling. Mm. So what, what I... The reason why we show this here today is because uh, there's a project here in the museum where I work my through the collection and, and uh, try to, uh, to, to save a lot of these images which are in danger to uh, deteriorate away. And uh, many of them, they have no ceiling. You can look at this one here. Yes, I'm coming. I'm so they, they have destroyed case or frame. And here this has no protective coating and nothing. And you see it's in quite bad shape. Mm. And this one gets a treatment, a new ceiling, a new ho uh, restored housing like this one. Yeah, so this has been restored. Yeah, this is the husband from this uh, oh, lady. Really? Yes, <laughs> and she said she wants to have the husband preserved preserve first. <laughs> oh, nice lady. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so there comes a ceiling and a, uh, and, and um, a housing in the housing, mm. so that it's really protected from too much uh, oxygen or air access, so mm. that the deterioration process goes slowly. Okay. And then it comes back in our archive, which has also better conditions than the use, usual household conditions where things are. Yeah. In shelves and whatever, hanging on the wall and so on. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So then we'll, we've seen some of what you have here, of the yeah. amber types. It's, it's a big topic. Mm -hmm. so, so after the corona, everybody has to come back <laughs> and get <laughs> to some see more. more. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for following. And goodbye. Bye-bye.